Hello. So this is a laptop I picked up a little while ago because although it's got a weird name here, Dosoft, Dosoft, Note 486. I managed to find out who really made it. Uh, you can see the part number there, TS30AS. So I found this laptop in the PC magazine from August 1994. Um, it looks like this is a company called Full Power Investment Company. Submitted the same laptop multiple, multiple times. Sometimes the same part number. You can see TS38 there. STS38S is a model 380 and the Ambers decided to go something else. It's all the same machine, just different CPUs, potentially different amounts of RAM, different amounts of uh, storage, hard drive space. Um, but they've all got the same, ultimately the same motherboard, chassis, integrated trackball, different screens um, as well. There are some monochrome, I think there was. Um, just dual scan and also TFT. Uh, it looks like you could even get a docking station with one of one or two of them. But yeah, it's interesting. Amber Computer Corp, which I believe ended up being owned by IBM. Um, MPC Mitsuba and ARM, and that's certainly not the ARM that we know enough today. I managed to find out that it was on the hardware compatibility list for OS2 Warp. So, oh, perfect. I'm going to build myself an OS2 warp um, laptop that's not a ThinkPad. And yeah, well, that didn't go well. I spent days trying to get it working and I really got nowhere. So, let's put um, a more appropriate one operating system and one that I might actually be able to get working on this thing. And as it's December, then that means it's Dosember. So let's have a quick look around this thing. As you can see, as I said, it's a Dosoft or Dosoft. No idea who they are. On the side, we have a couple of PCMCRAs, a movable battery. I can see traces of green. Nothing along the front. Along this side is a floppy drive, a power connector. Along the back, we have power button, all the standard ports. I quite like it's got separate PS2 keyboards and PS2 mouse. It's not a combined one, you need a splitter cable. Some sort of dock connector there with a cover that's come loose. Anyway, underneath a couple of trapdoors, memory and um, hard drive. So the hard drive in this does not work, in fact it does not exist. Let's put one in and get the thing going. So as I hinted at earlier, got the green in there. So the battery there's no signs of leaking on here. But I think this is a replaced battery because it's not well the laptop's not really branded either is it so, but it's look it's a it's a NICAD so tried it two amps two hours um yeah well that's gonna be low junk in it yeah they've also had a battery leak in here if you can see down there look all the green down there Interesting, we've got some stickers. It's very hard to get on here. Gibson Technology Flat Panel CRT BIOS. As it was, I can't quite read. So heating under this, so that's the CPU, and it looks like some memory. Let's get a drive in here. That's the original drive. Is this Seagate ST9145AG, which is 120 meg, quite a thick one. Um, 
I'm going to try a compact flash. I found these old Dany Leck ones. They work well on older machines. They work like on the Cyan Series 5 and they work well on the Amigas. So let's give that a go here. So this drive would have gone that way. Little bit of case, a little bit of case damage there. Oh yeah, just under it at 486DX, 128 meg. It's one thing about this laptop, it's QWERTZ. You see, it's a European keyboard. Um, I'm guessing German. Druck, Roland. Um, so I guess that's control. Yeah, it's a nice little trackball. No idea if that works. I did do a little bit of playing this to say before with the OS2. And this power supply was extremely flaky. It would work. Like that. Green lights. Plugging it in. It's now proving me completely wrong. Plugging it in, it would flash on, off, on, off, on, off, and not do anything. And not even that, it's charging the battery on a laptop from what early nineties. 30 year old laptop and it's charging unbelievable so also this laptop has a 20 volt output no idea why huh oh, turn it on then Not doing much. Oh, yes, it is. Floppy disk fault. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, God. What can we delete that? Yes, ENTF is deleted. <laughs> Let's go in the BIOS. Control OS. Let's get you in a bit closer. So, 8 mega RAM, hard drive none, hard disk auto. There we go, 244 meg. I ignore everything else. The battery is very flat. Save and exit. System stuff by 46 LP Evergreen. Interesting. There you go, you see it boot OS2 warp. It's not going to stay with OS2 warp. It's going to have. DOS 622 installed.
<laughs> Would you believe it? I'd have left that there. It's never got this far before. It's never got into the first settings of OS2 Warp before. I spent so long trying to get to this stage and it'll just crash during boot up. Oh my god. I feel like I should finish the OS2 Warp install now. Don't seem to have a mouse pointer. OS2 floppies. So yeah, if you'd seen my other video, I would I am um, end up putting OS2 onto an IBM PC 330. Oh, I can't believe this has worked. It's working. There you have it, a working OS2. Now the floppy drive is a bit flaky on this, it keeps failing to read discs, which would be a shame. And the trackball doesn't seem to work at all. But it reckons I have a higher battery. Let's see about that. Kind of battery works. Right, at all. It's a NICAD battery that's about 30 years old. This is just ridiculous, so it shouldn't work. So it turns out you can actually fully reboot into DOS from OS2. So I've just done that. I'm now installing Windows 3.1. I've got these digits. No. Yes, yeah, so yeah, we can do this. So now I'm going to reboot. That flickering you can see on the screen, I can't see that in real life. With my own eyeballs. And win. There we go. Didn't realise you could do that. I thought you had to use the OS2 boot manager and actually partition your drive. I didn't realise you could um, boot out of OS2 and it puts DOS startup no command.com, ms.sys and stuff like that in place and then let you boot up and then you can run a command to boot back into OS2 but I was doing a test I'll try the same benchmarks in 
Windows 3.1 DOS. So let's look at some benchmarks um, comparing DOS 6.2.2 NEAT or bare metal as such. Um, Windows 3.1 DOS inside Windows 3.1 full screen and DOS full screen inside OS 2 Warp. So these are just tests off of the Phil's DOS benchmark kit. Um, I couldn't run some of them so I've only got a subset here. So first of all there's 3D benchmark. Um, this is for low detail. Um, you can see DOS 6.2.2 is about 4 frames a second, 5 frames a second faster. Um, that's not a lot of difference between Windows and OS 2. Doom, low settings again, um, well, low and high settings. DOS 6.2.2 beats Windows 3.1 DOS, which beats OS 2 Warp DOS. But the difference isn't as much as I expected, to be honest. Um, and I actually thought Windows 3.1 DOS would be the worst of the lot, but there we go. This is the PC player benchmark for slow PCs, the low settings. These are all within what, uh, half a frame per second or so. Not a lot in it. And then there's that Chris's 3D benchmark for slow PCs, a spinning yellow cube is pretty much identical. It's 0.4 a frame per second between them. Um, so yeah, so there is a difference. OS2 Warp is a bit slower in DOS full screen mode. But if I crashed, if I ran something that crashed, that just destroyed DOS and Windows 3.1 that needed a joggly or power cycle, I was too warp in. I could just control escape, close the window and carry on. So for that, it's actually pretty decent. Of course I had no sound, this laptop has no sound. So they're the only benchmarks I had. So there you go, thank you for watching. This video isn't what I initially set out to do. Um, but once I saw OS2 decided to want to work, OS2 Warp 3 decided to want to work, I um, I had to try it out on this machine. Um, I thought it was quite interesting comparing um, plain DOS, OS2 DOS, Windows 3.1 DOS um, performance. And OS2 can sit there running and it doesn't seem to put much of an impact on the games or DOS um, performance. Which would be interesting back in the day. It would have been a if you got DOS drivers for your hardware, it might have been a good idea to run this back in the day. But I'm not sure I ever did. I'm not sure many people did. Um, I would have liked to have also tried out more um, these benchmarks in a window in DOS um, under OS2, but I could not get any video drivers to work on this machine. It will just crash and boot up. So I did say it was on the OS2 warp compatibility list, but it doesn't seem to like it from a video point of view. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Go check out other December videos. There are plenty around. Just search for hashtag December. Thank you very much. See you later.